Hi, and welcome back to On Track Tips. My name is Jason Weiser, and you're listening to Get On Track, Stay On Track. And we're helping your small business one expert at a time. And today's expert is Damian Farnworth from Copyblogger. And we're going to talk about essential copywriting formulas that every small business owner should know. And for those of you out there that don't know Damian Farnsworth, he is the chief copywriter at Copyblogger Media, and he has his personal blog, that's copybot.com. He went to college, studied poetry, finished off in English Lit. He's a husband, he's a father, and he's passionate about writing. And there's a few other interesting facts about Damien. He's ran two marathons. He says, both of them brutalized me. Uh, one was during a winter storm. The other one was during a heat wave. He said, I've hiked nearly 150 miles of the Appalachian Trail. Yeah, he's only got 2,100 miles to go. He's a self-proclaimed bastard son of Jacob Nielsen and David Ogilvy, and he dreams of one day winning the Nobel Prize. And, and man... I have every reason to believe that you, sir, can do this. Damian Farnsworth, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thank you for having me, Jason. Hey, this is going to yeah. be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I know there's I, a, sorry to cut you off, man. I know, I know there's a lot of people on the show right now, and I just want to give them a quick reminder and heads up that uh, you know, pay attention to the comment stream. If you've got questions for Damian, go ahead and write them in the comments and keep them short and simple, and we'll bring them up at the end of the show. If you're over on Twitter, there's a pre-constructed tweet in the stream right now. Grab that tweet and send it out to your friends. Bring some other people over that want to tap into this genius mind for the next half hour. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I've got so much uh, intro, I could say. Um, but there's links in the sidebar. Go there. If you're listening to iTunes, head on over to OnTrackTips.com and uh, click the big red button. That way you'll be able to get in on future live events and be able to ask our experts one-on-one -on -one these questions. So, um, Damien, I want to get right into it. Uh, did you have something you wanted to say real quickly before I start f slamming some questions at you? <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to make a comment on the Nobel Prize thing, but that's all right. Oh, well, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Uh, I was just saying, that was, yeah, I, I've sort of... I've sort of uh, cooled off on that dream. I suppose, I suppose as I age, I realize that it's not you know winning a Nobel Prize is not as important as just enjoying what you do. You know, so what do you, what do you mean as you age? That was from like a, an interview in March. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but you know, even before then, I was even more. I mean, it was like ten years ago. It was like a thing that motivated me, man. It was like I, I even created a. I don't know. If I said this, but I even created like a mock. You know, letter from the the Swiss Academy saying you have won it for this, you know, in this year, and projected it outward to like 64 or whatever, something like that. You know, 2064. Mm -hmm. I've since cooled since then, realizing that it's you know what that would be nice, but it's it's so much more better just to enjoy what I do and just become the best, you know, most competent per, you know copywriter I can possibly you know, can be. So um, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I'd still like to win. We'll talk about confident and uh, copywriter. Let's go back. I know I asked you this on another interview, but I want my readers to be able to hear it. I mean, what's up with this this blog title you put out there? I am the bastard son of uh, uh, Jacob Nielsen and David Ogilvy. I mean, that's a pretty bold statement there, bud. Yeah. So um, that came from you know a blog post that I wrote that I was tr I was talking about this high concept pitch idea and um, you know this is a, this is this is, anybody who's familiar with the film industry will understand that concept. You know, it's sort of like you know how do you pitch movies to a uh, movie movie executive at, at you know produ producer? You have to have two. You know, it's like um, you know. At, um, like you know, aliens in underwater or something like that, and so and thinking through just as I was, you know, kind of taking off working for myself, I was trying to figure out, all right, who do I want to be? Like, what what will make me stand out? Like, what can I do that nobody else has done as a copywriter? Because there are lots of copywriters, lots of writers out there. And um, I always knew that, that I wanted to carve out a niche, an area in which I could say, this is how I own this. This is why you should hire me. And so the two things that I just focused on was becoming, you know, the best darn direct response copywriter can be, and then becoming, you know, um, the best darn web copywriter that I possibly could. And so, you know, I just poured all my energy into learning about web usability. You know, that's the Jacob Nielsen part. And I poured all my, you know, a lot of ability and uh, time and invest in, into, you know, the art of writing direct response copywriting. That's the David, David Ogilvy part. And so, you know, it took me, you know, over a decade of experience, you know, close to 15 years of experience, and able to, to get to a point where I can say that, can confidently say that, yeah, you know, sure it is, it, it is boastful, but, you know, I think I, I could probably back it up. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence, right? 
And, right, uh, there. So, hey, um, so, and you make a good point there. You say the, the va um, understanding the value of blogs for websites. And one of the things that uh, some of our readers have been asking is, you know, how can I a include a blog onto my website and do I really need one? In fact, I go around and I, I look at, as I'm doing site reviews, I'll find e-commerce sites that they don't have a blog. They just have products or an e-commerce. Or they have a blog, but you push the button, and the button takes you to a blog over on WordPress.com or Blogger.com. Talk just for a minute about the value, why, uh, why you need to have those uh, working together. What, what can you hope to accomplish there? Uh, so um, a blog, what accomplish, it's, it's going to be advertising for you. And it's not necessarily the traditional model of advertising, but it's, it's a way in which you build an audience with that blog and you get the attention that you want from that because you're creating something that people, you know, people want that, are, that either inform them, either entertain them, or either uh, educate them. And in our business, we hear a lot of about the word content marketing, and all that means is when is we basically, you know, in the old world of traditional uh, advertising, you would um, pay the New Yorker to put, put an ad in their magazine, and you would advertise to that uh, to their audience. Well, nowadays you can build your own audience, and you can uh, you then become the publisher. Say um, through your content, whether you're informing, whether you're educating, or whether you're entertaining. If you look at like Red Bull, for instance, they're a content marketing company. They 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 they. They produce all kinds of great videos for the adrenaline um, addict, um, for this, the high extreme sports. I mean, they had a guy jump 22 miles out of space into the earth. They created like a two million dollar two hour movie about snowboarding. And by the way, they sell a high energy sports drink. And so they basically, because they're targeting their audience, and that's what a blog does for you. It helps you um, sort of attract that audience and um, develop that audience within which you can sell a product to. Is it safe to say then that uh, a blog would improve your search, it'll improve your authority, it'll give you, broaden, cover more real estate uh, with your website? Yeah, absolutely, all, all the above. Of course, you know, if you want uh, there, if you want to be found in search, you, of course you have to have content on there, and the more content you have, you know, on your blog, your website, the lar larger the net you're going to cast, you know, uh, for people to, to find your products, and um, you know, it's going to help you through the social, and it's the, the authority thing too. People start recognizing, you know, as you start building that 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 battery of content, people start recognizing this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, I'm going to check see if he has anything. So it start, it, it, typically it starts out with a search, and then from there it sort of grows through you know social uh, social media, and then through your own content, and you, you developing getting subscribers as you elevate that relationship from you know the person who lands on there from search or from social media to the person who becomes a subscriber to your blog to a person who becomes a subscriber to your email newsletter, and then eventually you've elevated that relationship to where they. Not only do they know you and do they like you, but they also trust you, and so they're more likely to buy from you. Yeah, one of the greatest examples that I always give to my clients and explain to them why you need to do this. Have you ever heard of the Phoenix real estate guy? Uh, it sounds familiar. Yeah, okay, so one day I was searching for WordPress plugins, and I land on the Phoenix real estate guide, and I start looking around, and he wrote another article about having a heart attack at Wendy's. And then as I start looking at this guy a little bit more, I find out that what his, his, his mode, uh, modus operandi, I think you would call it, is that I'm going to use my blog to break into the Phoenix real estate market. Phoenix real mm -hmm. estate market is the most highly dense market in, in all of America right now. And so you wow. can imagine how difficult it would be to try to capture that keyword outside of you know, paid traffic. And even paid traffic would be fiercely expensive. So here right. he is, but by having this massive blog talking about all kinds of other stuff, getting all this attack attention and social signal, and now you type in Phoenix Real Estate, and this guy shows up on the front page. Not every time, but I mean, he's right there. And I think that is exactly why, as an e-commerce, you need to have a blog, all right? Um, right. So, so now, it, 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 for me, one of the products that I'm getting ready to launch here, Mastermind, in the summer, I'm, uh, we're working on a pro, uh, Mastermind called uh, Reinventing Repurposing. And what we're doing is we're helping small businesses learn that you can take something like this, hang out on air, and you can chop it up, you can repurpose it to YouTube, a blog, uh, iTunes, you can snip, talk, slice, dice. And everything about this model is really easy to, I mean, you have to know the systems, it's not easy, but I mean, there's, it's doable to outsource it, to hand it off, to automate it, systems can be graded. You know the one piece of this puzzle that I am having the greatest trouble trying to solve? Writing. 
Mm-hmm. Because you know, I look at I look at somebody like like say um, Rand Fishkin. He does these Friday whiteboards, and he literally does a transcription. I look at Ryan Hanley, podcaster who I I totally respect, amazing blogger. But even his, he just writes these short blurps. What I want to do is I want this to be my content, and I think other I want to teach other pe- other businesses that you can use this as your content and develop a blog. So, right. question right. I would ask you to just kind of talk about for a minute: I writers, ghost writers, guest writers. Paid writers. How much is a blog worth? Ten dollars at iWriter, or hire a guy like Don Sturgill, who's well more than ten dollars, but definitely worth it because of the right. content that you're getting. Well, I think yeah, you think you said it there. You you get what you pay for, and so if your your vision for <laughs> building a blog, you know, your your budget for building a blog only you know uh, allows for ten dollar you know um, articles, then I think you need to rethink your strategy and you know get a bigger budget, sell more product, something like you know whatever good investment because you are going to get what you what you pay for and um, it's it's pr- it's pretty clear um, when you see someone who is um, working cheaply t- you know to write because you have to do it by volume I've been in that circumstance before where you know you had to turn out 15 articles an hour <laughs> in order to make any money and you realize okay this is not a great model for me it might be great for the guy on the other side of the you know who's paying the bill but um, so it's it, you know, and and especially in this world now, I mean, it pays to invest in a good writer or invest in a program in which teaches you to write because um, that person is going to be really the the voice of you know what you're because people will evaluate the the content you create. Now I will say this though, like um, I will I will take a passionate average writer over a um, non-passionate great writer any day. Their content, it's clear when someone is not passionate about it. The people who are passionate about it, they can have their typos, they can, you know, they may not grammatically get it right, but you can tell they know what you're talking about and they tell they love what they're talking about. So those people, um, if you, you know, I would say if for anybody who's wants to do that, just realize, you know, if you can, you know, if you can write at least at all, um, favor that and try to develop and harness that versus you know hiring somebody else. But if you don't have the time or you don't have the desire, yeah, of course, go out hire, pay somebody, and it pays to develop that person, especially in this age where you know Google is giving um, is looking at not only the content that's being created but the people who create that content. So you know um, it, we see this like in the um, the the sports mag- you know, sports public publishing where they hire like I think it was Sports Illustrated brought in. Um, the guy who uh, from New York Times, you know, they're, they're, th- these large publications are hiring marquee names because they realize that marquee name has an audience with it, and so they bring that. You know, when they go from the New York Times to the Sports Illustrated, they bring that audience with them, and people recognize that they have that. Um, they have that that name recognition, so it pays to you know find a writer out there. And you don't have to find the best writer out there and say. And you know maybe he's charging a thousand dollars per article. You, you know you could find somebody. I think this is great. Find somebody um, who who is exceptionally well. And this is where the sort of partnership of where you know the online partnership works well. Find someone out there who's doing great c- content, but just doesn't have the recognition necessarily. And you guys can partner together and say, hey, I'll help you if you help me. You know what? We'll help you get attention. We'll help drive you. I I have these contacts. So you could find somebody and develop them and grow them. Um, you know through that process. But you know, finding somebody with, with the chops in order to do that um, is it, is definitely going to be more valuable than paying you know ten dollars. It's never should never be about a price thing, really. Well, what if you what if you're on a, a low budget? I mean, what if you know? You know so let's look at ROI for a minute. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I know that there's articles out there. Don and I were having this conversation, and he was telling me, you know, that there it, there's you know some articles going out two hundred and fifty five hundred thousand dollars for one article. And I was just right. like, "That's wow! How how who can value an article at that level? Can you answer? I mean, what would you say? Who who pays that uh, much for the, an article like that?" Well, that's that's a, yeah. So that's a great point. I mean, so if you're hiring somebody, well, I guess because it depends upon the audience and the, and the name recognition. I mean, because this is what we know that you know, uh, you know, people like. Right. Well, who write? If I write an article for somebody else, I'm going to tweet that. I'm going to share it with my own audience. If I write a guest blog for somebody else and they don't have the name recognition, I mean, they're going. There's going to uh, be some transfer of that recognition to them. I'm going to point some of my traffic to them. You know, any anybody can do that. Point that traffic to them. So, but the ROI, yeah, yeah, you know, there is, of course, you know, a ceiling which 
you know, you, you obviously don't want to go above, and um, uh, and so you want to definitely value what the return on investment is. So yeah, you want to be smart about those kind of things. But again, you know, what I should say it's not about price. It's not about you know if it's just about sort of maximizing. Um, your your dollars for this just the sake of saving money, then um, I think that's the wrong way to view it. <clears throat> you know, instead of thinking of it as an investment, you know, this two hundred fifty dollars putting into somebody. And again, it's just not one blog post alone that's going to do it. It's going to be, you know, it's never a one time shot thing. It's going to be something that you know over over a six twelve month period, of, you know, two year period of time that you develop that and you gain and, and things slowly start to you know uh, sawtooth, you know, upwards uh, from all that recognition. So it's. It's not just about that one blog post, but it's about an investment. So you would think about, you know, as far as a business owner, you would think about, okay, I have, you know, one thousand dollars to spend on, um, uh, you say blogging, right? And so you'd figure out how's the best way to do that, you know, do fifty dollars for, you know, uh, once a week or two hundred fifty dollars on one big one once a, you know, uh, I'm sorry, fifty dollars per day, you know, for a daily one, or you know, would I spend two hundred fifty dollars a week on just one blog post? So those sort sort of things you need to look through. But you've said they, it a couple. Oh, no, finished. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So you've said it a couple times. You've talked about the authority. Uh, you've used this word. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the value and especially where, with the direction that this is going um, in terms of authority and blog and, and search? Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, authority is basically what you need, what someone needs to you know, sell something, whether it's an idea, whether it's you know to get donations, whether it's an actual product, whether it's a consultation. You need authority in order to um, uh, Communicate to people out there who land on your website that you can be trusted, that you know what you're talking about, that they can like you, and that you can be trusted. And that authority, uh, is what we're saying is basically you understand, you know, you have a understanding of what you do, and you've demonstrated that through your topics, through the products you've created, through you know the talks that you've given, through the results that you've, you know, basically anybody who's been in business long enough and can communicate those ideas. You know, is is an authority, and this is why I always talk about it. Is that it's so helpful for you know anybody with an idea, small business owners to large business owners to you know um, any the value of learning how to um, communicate clearly, concisely, and compelling is is crucial because if you if you don't if you have the authority, the experience, and you have the ideas, but you can't communicate that. Uh, Clearly, concisely, compellingly, then really, you know, your idea is going to lose out. So you actually you have to become, you know, it's that marketer in a sense. Um, it's what we talk about, you know, becoming the the killer, the killer copywriter, the killer poet. You know, David Ogilvy talked about, you know, the poet is going to focus on the creative stuff, right? But the killer comes in, he says, here's how you execute that and make that where you can actually make money from that. So. Yeah, nice. So talk for a minute then um, on that, uh, feeding off of that authority, what about the blogs that uh, they just spit out content, just bang, 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 one after the other, and they're not necessarily, I mean, there are some great blogs out there, Social Media Hat, Mike Galton, I have no idea how this guy pumps out as much incredible content every day that he does, but not everybody's Mike Galton. So what do you talk? I mean, what do you say to these blogs that are just pumping out content just for search? I mean, isn't it better? Would you would you say it's better to just slap that content out there or write one good authoritative post? What do you think is going to serve you better? Uh, yeah, it's so. I mean, the, you know, search is just one part of the equation, right? I mean, if you're getting people to your page, uh, it, certainly it, you need that part of the uh, part of the equation, but. Um, the, what you also need when people land there, and because this is what I talk about, the two the two things that really kind of um, uh, plague you know online content is one is is obscurity and the other one is neglect. And when I say obscurity is that there's billions of pages out there and um, your page is probably not going to be fine unless you optimize it. And the other part is that um, people are going to abandon it. Say they get lucky and they do find it, um, more than likely people will abandon it unless you've written it in such a way that people find it compelling, they find it engaging, they find it you know helpful and useful. Um, so 
writing content then just for the search end, you know, will not get people to actually convert once they hit your page. So, like, you know, so the thing, other things you have to think about is like, you know, are you making a connection with them when they hit your page? You know, are you engaging with them? Are you build, Are you trying to build a community? Or are you trying just to sell a product? Because people will, will smell that and smell a rat and be gone in no time. And so the people who really win online are those people who develop those relationships and those communities that people enjoy. Not only are you giving them useful information, giving them stuff that solves their problems, but you're giving, you're building a relationship. But you, you, well, you demonstrate that people are that 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 person behind the blog, website, whatever, is actually listening to you and what what you have to say and what you do. And so we go back to that again. I've said this before. You know, you have to in order to sell stuff online, is you have people have to know you, they have to like you, and then they have to trust you. And so if all your if your mo is not, do nothing but just get the search. Then uh, once they hit that page, you're probably not going to sell a lot of product. You know, it might be short-term, quick cash turnaround type stuff, but it's not going to. You know, there is no longevity in, in an approach like that. Yeah. So uh, everybody, if you're on Twitter right now, you know, uh, head on over to On Track Tips. That's pound hashtag On Track Tips, and I want you to answer our uh, survey question for the day. The survey question is: I want to be a better writer, or I need to hire a good writer. So go over to On Track Tips right now and give us your answer. I want to be a better writer or I want to hire a writer. So that's going to transition us into our next section, and that is how to become a better writer. Um, so let's look at um, I, just the anatomy of an ideal uh, blog post. There's a lot of people that ask this. What, what goes into the ideal blog post? What are some things? Yeah, so it starts off with the headline, and uh, that headline is you're making a promise, right? And so the 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 goal of that headline is do nothing but get, attract the attention of your prospect, and then once you get their attention, of course you have to keep it, and then that you know that that flows into you know your your first sentence, and then your what they call your opening paragraph. Those all have to work in order to compel people, whether you're you know it's through curiosity, whether it's through sort of shocking news, whether it's just you know some sort of compelling story. You move them through that, and then of course you've got you know um, your your sort of seductive head, sub headlines where the scanners, people who who are attracted by the headline, they move into the topic, but they scan the whole post. You've got the subheads, uh, subheadlines in there that sort of tell them the story, and they, that you know will uh, kind of trigger their curiosity even more. So you have to write subheadlines that are seductive in a sense. And of course, you know, you, you tell a story. You have to give something that's useful, that's meaningful to them, um, and then close it out with something, you know, with a, some kind of call to action that you know compels them to do something, whether it's subscribe to that, your blog post or you know, hey, you know, maybe you created a, a blog post where you actually you know said, here are 14 exercises to help strengthen your copywriting. At the end of that, you know, go do your homework and then um, you know email me back and I'll tell you how you do it. Or um, for example, like like you say say you create an infographic and uh, you had some copy in that infographic you graphic. Well, in a post like that, you'd share it on your blog. In a post like that, your call to action would be, hey, download this, print this, and put it, you know, hang it up somewhere, you know, on your back of your door so it's always right there. Or go share it on, you know, um, the social, you know, social media sites. So you're telling people what to do with that content. So when they're finished, they're satisfied, they're like, I want to do, because you've given them free content. So people are not, and it's that idea of reciprocity. You've given them something free, then you have the sort, you have the, the right to ask them, say, hey, well, why don't you do this for me? And if it's of equal value, and uh, then they're more than likely going to do it. So um, understanding what it takes to write a successful um, blog post like that. And here's a formula that I always uh, use whether I'm writing sales letters or um, blog posts, and it's called the four Ps. And the four Ps. Uh, are simply the promise, which is your headline, then the then the the paint the picture. What you're doing in that is it's sort of the body, and the, the paint the picture is this idea that you're showing them what their life will be like if they take you up on your promise, which is in your headline. Um, and then of course your proof, your proof shows like so here I can now demonstrate through testimonials, endorsements, uh, credentials that I can actually back up my claim. I can cash that I can cash that check that I wrote. And then of course the last part is the the, the call to action. Um, so you close, you push them to some sort of action. So promise, picture, proof, push. Excellent. Um, okay, so go. Let's go back over to headlines real quickly. And you and I had talked before when I very first met you, and uh, I, I was just so uh, excited that Damian Farnsworth was willing to go and give me a critique on my blog. I really appreciate that, man. But what you said was, you know, it's really good, but you need better headlines. 
And my response to you was, well, I did my keyword research and I wrote my headlines to, to really hit those keywords. And what was your response to me? And then explain a little bit beyond that. Um, so I said, I, I said that your headlines weren't, weren't, giving, weren't doing justice for your content because, um, and that goes back to this thought that like, you know, we're only writing for the search engines, you know, so we write with a keyword, you know, get my keywords in the content mentality where you're, all, you're, more, you're more, I mean, Google will tell you, it's write for the readers, you know, and, and you will naturally create content that the search engines like. So the thought about what you wrote, you, you hit your keywords, but when you actually read them on your blog, they're like, um, you know, why should I care? And the question is going through, you know, anybody who hits your pages, why should I care? Is it interesting? And we know today, I mean, we live in a slightly <laughs> uh, sensational world where, you know, uh, gawkers and buzzfeeds kind of drive a lot of, you know, kind of uh, crazy content. And But th that's the competition. That's the sort of marketplace you're in. So you have to create something that compels people to do that. Now, this doesn't mean you can't write, you know, this is what your, your alt tag is, you know, uh, your title tag is. Um, on the back end of your search is you can write those keyword rich you know for the search engines but your the one that's going to be displayed uh, it needs to be attractive and needs uh, for the people who read it so they care you know why should they care to do it and they should uh, and it works well on say uh, the social media you know if you share it on Twitter um, are people going to actually read it and are people going to actually click it so you have to write it in a way where it compels people to want to actually dive in and read it and so. You know, with headlines, and so you know what we what the copywriters do, good writers do. They use another formula called the four U's when they write headlines. So they make sure that the headline is useful, ultra specific, it's unique, and it's urgent. They try to fit you know three out of four of those into the headline. That makes a pretty decent headline. So that's what you know. Write a headline that justify that gives ju that does justice to your content, and um, you do that using that formula. We're going to pull up a couple questions from our audience members. And, uh, you know, you guys must be so interested in this conversation. You don't have time to write comments. This is like the lowest comments we've had, but yet it's the highest viewed show that we've had yet, Damien. So thank you, sir, for keeping my audience captive. Uh, thank you. All right, the very first thing, uh, Mick Sharp. He says, blogs are for telling stories. Very good yes. quote. Um, and uh, Marilyn Moore, she comes in and says, write with passion and authenticity. I think these are very sound uh pieces. Yes. Uh, ben, ben over on, um, on uh, YouTube is asking us, how often should a small business owner blog? And I'm going to follow that with Eric's point. I wonder how often the Phoenix real estate guy posted to get that kind of traction. Uh, Damien, we've only got three more minutes left, but uh, can you help us? You know, what would be your, what would be your um, uh, quick answer to how often should I blog? Okay, um, so that's a great question, and so I guess it, one of it just boils down to time, but also I guess what is your objective and your goal? And I and I was and I'll answer that question by saying the Phoenix uh, real estate guy probably blogged a lot early on. There's no doubt about it that, um, and this was you know uh, we've seen in the last two or three years, there's there were a number of studies that came out that showed that you know the the, the amount of of uh, the frequency that you published is correl is is tied to you know this your traffic. So the more you published, the more frequently you published, the more traffic you would get. So there is definitely a um, correlation between those two. So, but you know, so really, but it, it boils down to your time. So you have the time to write something that's useful and meaningful. Um, if you want a daily, if you want, you're on a daily schedule, if that's what you want to do, then you, you're not going to write the 1,800, you know, 2,000 word blog post every day. You're probably going to more write the 500, 600 word, you know, blog post. Um, but if you're if you're only on a two or three uh, published post, you know, per week, it would be. And you know, then you, you'd write the more 2,000, uh, 1,500, 2,000 word blog post, something that's useful, um, or it could be a, you know a podcast. And a lot of times these guys who do these you know like these shows or podcasts, you know they did then share the transcripts, so they have the content out there too. So it's not just sort of sitting by itself a video that's not searchable. But the transcript allows that you know search engines to track that too. So really, it, it depends upon what are your goals. You know how much traction do you want to get? How much attention do you want to get? How much time do you have to do that? How desperate are you, um, you know, to accomplish that? And um, you know, if you don't have, you know, do you have the budget to, to hire another writer? And some people, you know, will 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 create a single author blog, or they'll say be very purposeful, purposeful about saying I'm going to create a multi-author blog, like Buffer, for example, the Buffer Buffer app, 
Um, they have a multi-author blog, and that was a very intentional, you know, part, you know, as far as uh, building attention and publicity for them. But they publish, you know, uh, quite often on there. So those those things. You know, how desperate are you? How much time do you have? How much you know budget you have? Great, and, I, and man, Damien, I'm so sorry to have to stuff you into 30 minutes. It's just unfortunate, but we are at the end of our show. And uh, awesome. so I'm going to pull up one more comment here. Debbie Davis, always faithful Debbie Davis. Thank you so much, sister, because she's over there commenting on Twitter. She's taking some of Damien's great sound bites. So head on over there and, uh, and uh, share those, tweet those, help us out here at On Track Tips to get a little more traction. And uh, <coughs> Damien, if I want to become a better writer, where would you send me? Where should I go to learn how to be a better writer? Uh, well, I'd send you to your library, and uh, if you don't have time for that, you know, of course, go to copyblogger.com. Uh, lots of, uh, you know, t tutorials there, lots of information, uh, lots of free resources uh, to learn how to write there. Um, you can go to my blog, too, at thecopybot.com. Um, but yeah, you know, um, pick up any book by some of the great writers like, you know, Stephen King. He's got a great book called On Writing. Um, but any of the, you know, David Ogilvy uh, or, um, you know, Claude Hopkins, those kind of guys. So, Do you have a list of your f most recommended books somewhere that you can give to our readers? I do, yeah, I do. I have eight, re eight recommended books. So. Great. And he'll go and he'll put that in the comment link, uh, if I can volunteer you for that, on the I event will. tab. Uh, he'll throw that link up there for all of our readers. Go over there, thank Damien personally, and ask him any other questions that you didn't have time to ask him because you were watching so intently. To our podcast listeners, head on over to OnTrackTips.com where you can watch, read, listen, or uh, take part in future events. When you get there, Click the red button. That red button is going to get you and I into co contact with each other. You can ask me. Let me know. What are you struggling with? And I'm going to go out and I'm going to find you another expert like Damian Farnsworth on copywriting. And I'm going to bring him to the show and you're going to have direct access to these guys. So head on over to On Track Tips. Hit the big red button. And we're going to see you next time. This is Jason Weiser with uh, Damian Farnsworth. You're listening to Get On Track, Stay On Track. And we are helping your small business one expert at a time. Thank you so much to our expert, Damian Farnsworth. Bye now.